Welcome to our latest episode, Shifting Income with Trusts for Tax Efficiency. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about how you can use trusts to shift income to those you support to lower your overall tax burden. It's a strategy I'm surprised more people don't employ. Welcome to the Wealth Uncensored podcast, straight talk about everything that impacts your wealth. In each episode, I share what I've learned through my own experience and two decades of helping high net worth clients structure their affairs to minimize taxes and protect their assets for the next generation. I'll also feature special guests who are experts in their own field, sharing their knowledge and experience to help you protect what's yours. I'm your host, Jimmy Sexton. Let's dive into today's show talking to another tax advisor and I was talking to him about a client project we're working on together. I mentioned this strategy as an option for our mutual client. He was blown away by it. He had never heard or thought of this strategy but really liked it. I was kind of surprised because this is a top-notch tax advisor. I thought this strategy was common knowledge but guess not. So I thought why not do a podcast on this episode and share this hidden gem. Here's a very common situation. Someone owns income producing assets like real estate, stocks, or a business. They use the income generated by these assets to support themselves, their family, and maybe some other people, who knows. The problem with this strategy is that the owner of these assets receives the income produced by them and pays the associated income taxes. It's quite possible that the income generated by these assets pushes this person into a higher tax bracket, resulting in even more taxes. Now, once the income has been received, reduced by taxes, but received, the person uses what's left to support themselves, their family, and whoever else. Depending on the situation, supporting those other people may even result in an additional layer of tax in the form of gift taxes. There's a better way, and I'm gonna share it with you. Have the assets owned by a trust and make those you want to receive the income the beneficiaries of that trust. Here's how it works. You set up a properly structured trust and you transfer your desired income producing assets to it. You have to be mindful that such a transfer could result in gift or capital gains taxes or even other taxes depending on the jurisdiction. So it needs to be planned carefully. Now the beneficiaries of the trust are anyone you wanna support, usually your family. I recommend making the beneficiaries discretionary rather than fixed because it gives a trustee a lot more latitude in deciding who gets what, when, and how much. With fixed interest beneficiaries, the trustee has to distribute in accordance with the fixed interest. There's no flexibility, right? So for example, if the trust says each year four kids are to receive 25% of the income of the trust, that's how the trustee has to distribute the income. There's no flexibility. He can't distribute it differently. Each kid needs to get 25%. With discretionary beneficiaries, on the other hand, the trustee has wide latitude to decide which beneficiaries are to receive distributions when and how much. This is especially useful if certain beneficiaries need more support than others. The trustee can distribute more to certain beneficiaries and less to others, or to the exclusion of others altogether, depending on whatever the situation is, right? You have the trustee needs to look at it on a case by case basis and decide what's right. Here's an example. Let's say you have one kid that's in university and another one that's already has a job and is financially independent. The kid with a job probably needs less financial support than the kid that's still in school. With discretionary beneficiaries, the trustee would have the flexibility to distribute more to the kid that's still in school and less or nothing to the kid with a job. You can even draft the trust so that distributions are required for certain types of expenses like health, education, and welfare. This way, the beneficiaries are insured to have certain things paid for by the trust. While the decision of who is to receive distributions, when they're to receive them, and how much they're gonna receive needs to be the trustees alone, that doesn't mean you can't give your input or that they can't consider like input from the beneficiaries. Now here's how this shakes out tax-wise. Rather than you receiving all the income, paying the tax, and then supporting whoever you support, the income goes to the trust. If properly structured, this income won't be attributed to you. It'll be the trust's income. This will lower your tax bill. Hell, it may even push you into a lower tax bracket if you're lucky. In this situation, the trust would generally be liable for the tax. But in many countries, like the U.S., any income distributed is taxed to the beneficiaries rather than the trust. If a trust distributed all its income to the beneficiaries, the beneficiaries would pay the tax rather than the trust, so no double taxation. And chances are that those you support, like your family, are in a lower tax bracket than you are. As such, having income taxed at their lower tax bracket rather than your higher tax bracket will result in an overall lower tax. 
Plus, your trust will provide you additional benefits like estate planning, asset protection, and privacy. So just to recap, we've explained how you can use trusts to shift income and the associated tax liability to those you support to lower the overall tax burden on the income. To help people understand all the benefits of trusts, I created a Trusts and Foundations Guide. I'll put the download link in the description. Check it out. I hope you found this episode useful. And don't Thank you for joining me on Wealth Uncensored, where we help you minimize taxes and protect your wealth for the next generation. If you like our show, be sure to subscribe and leave a review. And if you have any questions or suggestions for future episodes, we'd love to hear from you. You can email us at info at esquiregroup.com. And don't forget to visit Esquire Group's website for more information on how we can help you secure your wealth. I'll be dropping knowledge again next week. Don't forget to join us.